All right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York, where it is 73 degrees here on Tuesday afternoon, August 13th, 2024. So instead of doing one big long uh, roundup rant, I am doing three short rants. And uh, we were just over in sub Saharan Africa for my last. Uh, Cliff Notes rant. Now we're going to go from Sub-Saharan Africa to the bottom of the Deep Blue Sea. And we're going to go over to Medium.com and uh, with this fellow, I think it's a fellow, the, the Enigmatic Bee. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole, or we're just going to read the, the opening few paragraphs to this excellent essay titled Deep Sea Delusions, Deep Sea Delusions, starting out with a great quote from one of my heroes, Wendell Berry. I wish there had been a date on this Wendell Berry quote. Quote, Praise ignorance, for what man has not encountered, he has not destroyed. Thank you, Wendell. And uh, so we're going to go from that quote back to B to the bottom of the deep blue sea. <clears throat> there has been a flurry of articles published recently about the discovery of, quote, dark oxygen. Dark oxygen. <clears throat> or how metallic nuggets found on the bottom of the ocean can actually produce a key input to complex life. First of all, this is a fantastic scientific discovery proving that oxygen can be produced not only by living organisms, but inorganic, quote, dead matter as well. At the same time, however, this is also terrible news for mining companies who were funding the study and were clearly hoping for a different result, as well as terrible news for the, quote, energy transition being good for the planet narrative. Well, everything well, with the possible exception of humans. Well, everything has a reason to exist, and the relationship between cause and effect is not always as straightforward as one would like to think. Take a deep breath, and let's dive in. Uh, again, I will put the link on here for those of you who can get through the medium paywall. But we're going to take a, at least a shallow dive into the deep blue sea. Let's start off by discussing what these nuggets or metallic nodules are. As a remarkably well-researched, although very much biased, article in Time Magazine explains, quoting Time Magazine, you know, fully in support of the mining industry. Uh, Time Magazine being one of the single, obviously, biggest megaphones about uh, the energy transition being good for the planet narrative. All right, take it away, Time Magazine. Similar in size and appearance to partially burned charcoal briquettes, the nuggets are called polymetallic nodules and are an amalgamation of nickel, cobalt, manganese, and other rare earth metals 
formed through a complex biochemical process in which shark teeth and fish bones are encased by minerals accreted out of ocean waters over millions of years. The nodules, which are <coughs> strewn across a four and a half million square kilometer, <coughs> otherwise known as 1.7 million square mile swath of the international ocean between Hawaii and Mexico, known as the Clarion Clipper, Clipperton Zone, contain significant amounts of the metals needed to make the batteries that power our laptops, phones, and electric cars. Close quote. Back to B. <clears throat> That piece, you know, in time was written years before it became known that those nodules are not just sitting there waiting to be found, but are also performing an important role in the deep sea ecosystem. As Pippa Howard, director of the Biodiversity Conservation Organization, Fauna and Flora International put it back then, quote, they, meaning the, the uh, nodules, have got living ecosystems on them. Taking those nodules and then using them to make batteries is like making cement out of coral reefs, close quote, or as the author of that same time article succinctly remarked, quote, removing them would be akin to yanking a couple of wires out of the back of your computer just because you don't know what they're there for, close quote. And now we have proof that these nodules were not just sitting there waiting for Homo sapiens to evolve and to build batteries from them, but to produce oxygen for deep sea life to flourish in the absence of light and photosynthesis. Removing them sounds even crazier of an idea than before. And, uh, then B goes, uh, takes his deep dive with all of uh, talking about, uh, you, you know, we, we've talked about it many times before about how these giant uh, ocean bottom scouring trawlers are going to be stirring up uh, millions, billions of tons of this shit in pristine waters, obliterating every single thing uh, off the face of the ocean floor in the deepest oceans on the planet. And, and then he, he goes off uh, talking about the, this absolute joke body called the International Seabed Authority, this UN-backed, uh, this U, the, the group of people regulating deep sea miners and, and how B talks about who do you, how do you think the, uh, the International Seabed Authority is being funded by? It is being funded by a bunch of planet eaters who stand to make billions of dollars uh, 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 off destroying the seabed. No shit, Sherlock. Anyway, I will uh, I will put the the link on here for those uh, of you who have Medium. Um, Okay, let's just sum it up. This is him. Well, I'm going to sum up with B's last paragraph and move on to my buddy Elliot Jacobson. All right, wrap it up, B. 
the cognitive dissonance between in, indigenous wisdom and the pompous view of the technocracy could not be greater. In the light of the discovery of dark oxygen and the risks we run by stirring up carbon-rich sediment, how can our techno-utopian leadership class uphold the view that they are saving the planet with renewable energy? Maybe it's just me, but why don't any of these articles ever ask whether we should continue with this highly destructive habit we call modernity or look for alternatives? Why do we think that everything is just there for us to take? If we go on like this, we will soon be forced to choose between a climate and an ecological disaster unless we run out of economically viable resources first, starting with oil, and the whole world economy goes through an involuntarily, involuntary but nonetheless massive simplification, which is exactly uh, what, what it's getting ready. The, the, the great simplification is the obvious uh, postscript to the great acceleration. You will, we will go directly over the Seneca Cliff from the great acceleration to the great simplification. But talking about the great acceleration uh, for my rantlet part three, we're going to hear from my old buddy Elliot Jacobson coming up in little rant number three coming up in another video in one minute. My guys.